What's up, fish tank people? Dustin's Fish Tanks bringing it to you and you and you and you on a Sunday, baby. How's everybody doing? I hope you're doing well. Today, folks, it's Sunday. It's Species Sunday. I'm going to bring you seven different variations of one type of aquarium plant. I'm also going to show you how to look as an overall overarching view with species and the different variations and what to expect with each. We're going to talk about a couple of house plants. We're going to talk about a couple of pond plants, and then we're going to dive deep into seven variations of one species of aquarium plant and one plant at the end that breaks all the rules I'm about to tell you. Here we go. All right, so first things first, I do want to get a little personal with you all before we break into the Species Sunday. Your boy Dusty has been slightly off of his game this week. You see, I woke up Monday morning not expecting to spend Monday night in Marietta, Georgia. Look, if I were to go to battle, if I were to go to war, I have a killer team. Andrew behind the video camera right here today deserves some credit in the comments because we've been killing it with the video production these days. Thank you for all of you who have noticed how that's been going down. But my man Josh showed up sick on Monday. Josh is an absolute warrior. I had to take the warrior reins and drive down to Atlanta to pick up 8,000 plants. We're going to show you some of those plants in a second. I was slightly off my game, not to mention as you roll over here, I've got a little bit going on because I've got this whole new greenhouse being built. You can see I've got the actual engineered prints being printed out here, which is um, really dope and really exciting. It's also a little bit stressful. I keep myself motivated by listening to stuff like my man Arnold Schwarzenegger when he talks about how he had the vision of being Conan the Barbarian. And I suggest you guys listen to that and link that up in the comments. It's all about the vision. So I got to keep my vision in front of me at all times while it's getting a little crazy. Oh, by the way, did I mention that my wife and kids are home on summer break and I'm still unfortunately at this time running my business out of my house, which sucks. In the words of Biggie Smalls, money and blood don't mix like two chicks with no... Uh, I can't say that on YouTube. Let's talk about some plants. Okay, so the purpose of this video is to show you how uh, you can look at different variations of species. I'm going to start with house plants, I'm going to go to pond plants, and then we're going to move on to the wonderful aquarium plants. Just as a general overlaying lesson that I want to teach you all today. This is a plain Jane ficus, all right? Like, I'm not super great with house plants. This is a plain Jane ficus. Look at how this plant has grown like crazy. It's in a tiny little thing. Like, people have had these plants for you know, like 15, 16 years and they grow huge and like people, they're not that hard of a plant to keep. So it's a super easy house plant. This is the plain Jane variety. This plant grows like crazy. It's probably root bound, doesn't care. It's the simple variety. I want to show that as a backdrop to this. This is a ficus that I bought my wife for our anniversary. I buy my wife a ficus even though I like it a lot. And this plant, I don't know the exact variety of it. This plant is a little more finicky. Why? It's a little fancier. It's got the thinner leaves. It's not quite as robust. It's not quite as like hardy and beefy. And in fact, I've actually done some damage to it trying to like pin it around or whatever. So I do love this plant, but it's not as easy to keep as the plain Jane variety. I'm gonna bring this into aquarium plants in a second, but we're gonna go from house plants. We're gonna go down into pond plants. Let's roll to the pond. Okay, so we talked about house plants. We're gonna talk about pond plants before we get into aquarium plants. And any of you old school plant keepers that keep house plants, please drop us a comment on different variations and stuff like that that you see. Also like, subscribe, and share, and all that fun stuff. The pond is another great example of species variation and uh, easier to keep stuff versus harder to keep stuff within the same species. Uh, for me, one of the big things that I love is the lilies in this pond. I've got, um, these are the hardy lilies. The fancier you get, we have the uh, Queen of Siam and a Yanis uh, lily. These are hardy lilies, okay, so they can survive the winter. These are the tropical lilies, which are super dope, have a better looking flower, but they're fancier. They've got the red in the leaves and the whole deal, and they have a better looking flower, but they will not survive the winter, so they have to either be taken in or cut back. Typically, they just die, and it is what it is. They're a annual thing for me because I do not have an entirely tropical climate. I want to point out another example of this too. We can talk about the hibiscus. I had this really fat hibiscus over here, got super tall, was super awesome, had hummingbirds flying to it, was fantastic. That didn't survive the winter. The hibiscus over there, which must be native to the United States, doesn't flower until the end of the season, survived. These ones right here are a fancier variety, Aloha, the Hawaiian flower, I believe it is. Um, they have to come into the greenhouse in the winter. So, But I've got another one that I want to show you before we get into the aquarium plants, and that is this. These are taro plants right here. Taro plants, okay? Generally speaking, and at the end of this video, I'm going to show you a, a rule breaker with this, but generally speaking, the fancier the design, the darker the colors, the more unique the pattern, the harder the plant is to grow or the 
shorter or smaller it might be. So I want to show a perfect example of it. And you can see kind of like how the crossing goes with this. I've got the plain Jane. This is a mo this is a regular Taro right here. This is a mojito. And then this is an imperial. And you can see how we come down the line from like limited variation on the leaves to the imperial, which has the black to, of course, the black magic. OK, so I'm showing you these. Now, the black magic, in my experience, doesn't grow back as fast, isn't quite as quick of a grower because it's a little bit harder variation. It's been crossed and how it has this black variation to it. Compare that to like the Imperial Taro right here. This one grows a little bit faster. The Mojito as well, you can see the little marbling on the leaves. Um, these pond plants do grow quickly. They're, they grow above, out of the water, a lot of readily available, both sunlight and CO2. But as a general rule, you can see with this completely different type of species, these plants right here, like the fancier they get, the slower, the little bit harder they are to keep. Now it's time to talk about some aquarium plants, seven of them to be exact, and a rule breaker at the end. This is a fun one for me, folks. These are hygrophila. I told you seven, I got eight different species of these plants for you. I'm gonna have my special guest cameo from my man Josh in just a second, but I'm gonna start with the most like old school players can new school fools, cast keep a jumping like kangaroos, you see me on the bar, but we ain't trying to lose. They all be got, they done changed the rules. I'm sorry, here we go. A bus raps like we boys bus cat. Oh, I, I could go outcast all day. All right, the first one, the old school player to new school fools. This is Hygrophila deformis, you know it, you love it. Guys, get your dollars ready for Hygrophila deformis, also known as water wisteria. Now look, this is the alpha. This is like the plant. If you're a beginner and you don't know what you're doing, you want to get yourself some wisteria. It's one of my best selling plants. And this plant is the hardy. This has fully been grown underwater. You can see the root structure like that. Everything I'm selling looks just like this, by the way, which is baller good roots grown underwater. This is like the variety that you want when you're the beginner. Hygrophila deformis. Think of this as like a uh, family tree. This is like the top. Now we're going to get real crazy. We're going to go from Hygrophila, fast growing uh, background plant, uh, comes from all over Asia, grows completely different above water. This is below water growth. Beginner plant, great for fry. I mean, what else can I tell you? I've got a lot of videos. Click the links around here. Um, super fast grower. I can actually like watch this plant grow in full sun. I'm, I'm going fast through this plant because I've talked about it a ton because I want to go right into its sexy. Oh my God, did you see its cousin, bro? This one right here. This is variegated wisteria. Now on the surface, it doesn't look like much, but if I can get real close, you can see the variation of it where you can see how it's got the little variegated wisteria up in the top of there. The leaves are different. This plant is different. This plant is not as responsive. Why? Because it's genetically different. It's been crossed so that it's got this variegation in it. So this plant doesn't grow as well for us in the greenhouse as its hardier Hygrophila deformis cousin because of this variation. It still grows like fire, but it's got that cool variation on top. So I want you guys to see the difference there. This plant actually gets a little bit of pink, a little bit of red in the top under pretty high light. So it would take a lot of lighting in your aquarium. The Hygrophila deformis low light plant, this could be medium, you know, low, low and medium light. It'll, get, it'll look better for you in higher light. So I want you guys to see the difference in there because it is a cool variation. I'm gonna stick with Hygrophilas. We're gonna get into some other hygros right now. Now we're going to talk about another variety of Hygrophila. We're going to talk about Hygrophila stricta. I've got a guy who has strict rain and making sure that my plants look more amazing than I can keep them in the greenhouse. His name is Josh. He's been snotting up green mucus all day, but he's fired up to talk about Hygrophila Yay. stricta. Josh, dude, I'm going to talk about it real quick, then I'm going to pass it to Josh. Notice we've got red on here, okay? So the stem is red. Generally speaking, plants with red are a little harder to keep. Josh, break it down for the folks about Hygrophila stricta, you beautiful strict. All right. Uh, basically, like this plant requires like a ridiculous, like I would say, I'd say it's it requires high light, uh, and then it definitely requires a really good amount of iron. Um, and what you're going to get out of that is you're actually going to start to see that this even has red veins going down like the inside of the actual leaf that go out to like the edges of the leaf. And all of those red veins are just gonna get really deep red. And it's just gonna keep looking like that. 
And also the leaf itself is actually gonna get like a lighter color. It's not gonna be as green. And so this is like really a really sick plant, but that iron's gonna bring out that red tone throughout the entire leaf. It almost makes it look like, uh, like its veins are on fire or something. It's kind of sick. Uh, it's definitely an intermediate plant and I definitely wouldn't get this. I wouldn't call this like the easy hygrophila. This is definitely just like the Periwitoto over there. It's, it's a harder to keep plant. So definitely, definitely a sick plant though. How do you learn how to take care of plants? By killing them sometimes. This is hygrophila nashimal. Nachimal, N-A-C-H-I-M-A-L-E. I can actually Nailed spell it. 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 Nachimal, yeah. nail it, spelled it right. This plant is, is freaking awesome. Has come in a little bit more red, a little bit harder to keep because of the red. Now we choked this plant out when we first got it. This one requires a little bit more light, right? Would yeah. you consider this like similar to the Stricta? I would say I would say that the ones that are the most similar with Stricta is like the Periwitoda and the Stricta are more of intermediate plants, whereas this is right on the edge of being intermediate. I feel like that a beginner could probably see if they have like the ability to keep Periwitoda restricted by keeping this plant. Ah, I got you, the gauge too, yeah, yeah. So this is another variation though, little bit harder to keep because it's got a little bit more color in it, but you guys can just see the different variations of this plant and like how there's like varying degrees of it progressively gets harder with a little more color. There are a few exceptions, but I want you guys to see just all the different varieties I would even of that. Like clay or something like that, you know? He's planting it in clay. You're learning well, man. <laughs> so we go from Stricta with my man Josh. We want to stick with a plant that looks similar to it. We're going to talk about the cherry leaf right here. And I'm passing this over to Josh. We've got the cherry leaf and then we've also got its shorter compact cousin here. But I want to show just the similarities between the two. And then Josh, talk about the difference between Stricta and cherry leaf. Well, so there's a pretty vast difference here. And uh, you're not really going to get the veins that come through this. You are going to get the red tint in the leaf. Uh, it's not going to be the lighter tint that this is going to have. It's also really easy to keep. Uh, it's, it's much more of a beginner plant. Both of these plants actually are kind of beginner plants. It's the compact and the cherry leaf. Uh, they don't really require a bunch of light and they don't really require high nutrient levels either. So, I mean, it's definitely, the, the difference is, is vast in the uh, level of care. And so, as for the appearance, these have a lot thicker leaves, whereas like the Stricta has that thinner leaf structure. Both of these are gonna have those really wide, thicker leaves. They also branch out more, almost like a tree, whereas the Stricta just kinda of like grows like a bush more than a tree. So we so. look, bigger leaves, easier to keep. Not as many red veins, easier to keep. This has new growth coming in on it as well. Like, simpler design, if you will, of the plant, easier to keep, easier to grow. We've got more varieties of Hygrophila to show you. The compact, talk about the compact a little bit. Dude, the compact's probably my favorite one that we have. And the reason is, is because it's it's a really beautiful like foreground plant. Like you can plant this in the foreground of your tank and it'll like provide that really red, like lush looking contrast that people are always looking for. But you don't actually have to do very much for it like you do most red plants. Uh, so I mean, it's not, you don't really need high light. This stuff pretty much grows anywhere. Uh, I've thrown it in all sorts of places in my tanks and it just kind of grows wherever it wants. Uh, what's really cool is, is like you can see all this new growth. These wider leaves are the indicator of its above water growth and these thinner leaves that you see on top are its indicator of its submerged growth. So I actually really love watching this plant transform and it does it so quickly that it's, it's just hard not to fall in love with it. It grows really fast and it comes in really beautiful. So, and now it's time to get fancy. So we're gonna go from the compact into one that stays green. Josh, take it away, man. You're the one managing these yeah, plants. So this is Salicifolia. And this is like literally like what he just said. I mean, if you look at all of these variations, everything over here besides that turns red. So like, these all get the red, except for the Hygrophila deformis. Even the variegated gets a little bit red. What? But this one stays green. Yeah. So talk yeah. about the Salicifolia. So Salicifolia is like super simple plant. Uh, it grows really fast, doesn't require, it's a lot like the compact and, the, and, and uh, the cherry leaf where it doesn't really require very much attention or, you know, it, or a lot of room or anything, honestly. It just kind of grows on its own and doesn't really care. Uh, I would, say, I would say potassium, just like any of these high grows, would definitely benefit you greatly. 
But uh, other than that, I mean, this is a super simple plant. As you can see, like the uh, the leaf structure is a lot like the 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 periwatoda or even the stricta over here. It's very thin and it's got like that kind of veiny leaf through it and stuff like that. But like I said, I mean, out of the the biggest thing about this specific plant is that it just stays green, which is the only hygrophila I think that I even have my in, in there that actually stays green. Even the periwatoda turns red. Yeah, so. the simple the, the the takeaway from that is simple though. You guys, even with Amazon sword, the plain Amazon sword, Blair Eye is green. The deep purples they're a little harder, or whatever. The simple green, the simple to plant, easy it is. We're going from simple, folks. We're going to fancy. I want to talk about Hygrophila periwatoda. Now, I would love to tell you that we mastered this plant out of the gate. We didn't. We didn't. We had to take. We 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 had a pro. We had trouble well, we keeping it. it. We fell in love with it because we learned how to keep it. This is Hygrophila corymbosa periwatoda. This stuff is one of my favorite Hygrophilas. This is a little bit more demanding. Now, this plant on its tips gets red, which means. Well, which means it's fat, but it needs a little bit more light. So when we have this plant, unfortunately, with the volume that we get it in, sometimes it gets a little choked out because it requires a little bit more light. But you can see this has been grown underwater. We love this plant, higher light, higher iron content. It's a little more demanding, okay? So you can see the variation of the hygrophila here, though. This is a periwatoda. It actually will get like a little, a little it's a little more uh, robust green than the other ones on like the, like the deformis or whatever, which are a little bit lighter green. But this is a perfect segue as we talk from how the light green plants are easier to keep. This one's a little bit harder, does get pink at the tips. We've showed you how like the plain Jane deformis, the light green, easy to keep. I've got one, generally speaking, red plants are gonna be a little bit harder to keep. This is the rule breaker to everything that I just told you, you freaks. It's this, this is my Probably one of my favorite plants we've gotten in in 20 whatever year it is 18 that like Hygrophila cordata red okay gangster plant, gangster plant. it's actually like that on our it, yeah yeah like it I think it is described as a gangster plant on DustinsFishTanks.com this plant is awesome does not require an intense amount of light despite the fact that it gives you red so a comparison plant would be this like to like our alternate thera which is a red plant which sells really well because it's red and stays red and isn't demanding i have to share folks i had a moment when i was down in tennessee i uh i sold some of this to fish mania and i watched somebody come into the shop i don't i never see this i can't see you i want to hug you and kiss you but you're just through the camera so i can't do it but i watched this plant drop into a tank and this, this cute little Asian chick was sitting there and I watched her face just like light up like like she was just like what is that and I was like well that is hygrophila cordata red and that is the exact response I am looking for so part of my vision for greenhouse 2.0 is to be able to actually see people and see that reaction because it really made my day but hygrophila cordata red hardy red plant like can take a lot of light doesn't need a lot of light does not care ruthlessly growing roots for you all so absolutely love the hygrophila cordata red it's the rule breaker at the end of this seven call it eight species hygrophila on this species sunday do me a favor hit the like button subscribe button share button drop me a comment on how andrew has been killing it with the video production drop me a comment how josh just killed it with hygrophila and subscribe tank on everybody later